Welcome to lesson four in Saxon Math course two. Today's lesson is about number lines and sequences. Our objectives for this lesson, after this lesson you should be able to compare and order numbers on a number line, use comparison symbols to compare numbers, add and subtract integers on a number line, and determine a pattern or rule for a sequence and then apply it to continue the sequence. Some review from your last lesson. Remember unknown numbers in addition. If you're missing one of those add-ins, you just subtract the other two numbers that they've given you. Unknown numbers in multiplication is kind of the same. If you're missing one of those factors, you're going to divide the other two numbers that they gave you. Unknown numbers in subtraction, it depends on what number you're missing. If you're missing the first number, which remember is the minuend, you're going to add the other two numbers. If you're missing that second middle number, which is the subtrahend, you're going to subtract the other two numbers. And lastly, unknown numbers in division. If you're missing the first number, which is the dividend, you're going to multiply those other two numbers. And if you're missing the second number, the divisor, you're going to divide the other two numbers to solve. Let's get started today talking about number lines. So number lines are going to have both positive and negative numbers. Uh, this set of numbers that you show on a number line is known as the integers. It's all of the counting numbers and their opposite negative numbers. And zero isn't positive or negative, so that also stays on a number line. Negative is always to the left of zero. Positive is always to the right of zero. And we also call zero the origin because everything starts at zero on a number line. Here's just an example of a number line. Notice it has two arrows, one on each end. That means the number line goes on forever in both directions, positive and negative. We're going to talk a little bit about comparing numbers. We have different comparison symbols that we use to compare numbers. We have the equal to symbol. That means the two numbers are exactly the same. We have the less than symbol, which means that the right number is larger than the left number. And we have the greater than symbol, which means the left number is the larger number. So here's an example. If we were comparing four and negative six, Positive numbers are always larger than negative numbers. It doesn't matter what the two numbers are. So the answer would be four is greater than negative six. And that's how you would read that. Four is greater than negative six. If we were comparing negative five and negative three with negative numbers, the closer a negative number is to zero, the larger the number is. So negative 3 is closer to 0 than negative 5, which means it is larger. So we would read that as negative 5 is less than negative 3. Sometimes we'll be asked to list numbers in order. Make sure it's just like comparing, but we're going to use more, more than two numbers. That should be 2. More than two numbers more than two numbers and no symbol uh, make sure in the problem you pay attention to whether it's asking you to go least to greatest or greatest to least a lot of times they're going to have you do three numbers that you're putting in order so for example we were going to list zero one and negative two in order from least to greatest, we need to figure out what's the smallest number. Well, there's only one negative, so we know that that is the smallest number, so negative two would be first. Zero is always smaller than positive numbers, so that would be our middle number. So our answer would be negative two, zero, and one. Okay. So your book has an interesting way of showing division, or sorry, subtraction on a number line. We probably won't use it all that often, but let's go through it just in case you see it again in your book. So the way they show you to do this on a number line is remember zero is the origin, so we always start at zero. 
So say we were going to subtract and we were going to do 2 minus 6. And up till now, you really haven't done a whole lot of subtracting a larger number from a smaller one. So this will be a good practice here. So we're going to start at 0 and we're going to put kind of a dotted line up from 0. And we're going to go to our first number. So our first number, our minuend, is 2. So we're going to draw a line with an arrow up to 2. So this would line up with 2. And then we're going to draw another dotted line up from the end of the arrow. And then we're going to go 6 to the left because we're subtracting. Subtraction always means moving left on the number line. So we're going to go 6 to the left. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to put this here. And then we'll just draw a dotted line down to here, see where we ended up. And you see we ended up at negative 4. So the answer to this would be negative 4. Let's do this one more time. I'll get rid of what we have here. Now, like I said, you probably won't use this all that often, but you may run into it in your book, so it's good to practice. So let's say we were doing, oh, let's do 4 minus 7. So remember, we're going to start at 0. I won't go up as high this time. We're going to go to the right to our 4. Then we're going to go up again. And now we're going to, since we're subtracting, we're going to go left 7. So you kind of have to kind of have to watch down here as you're going to make sure where you are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we'll draw our dotted line down. And you can see we ended up at negative 3. Now another way to do this without drawing the lines so let's say we were still doing 4 minus 7. What you can actually do is switch the two numbers around and imagine it's 7 minus 4, which would equal 3. But then since we did have a smaller number minus a bigger number, just know that answer is going to be negative. So you can do it that way as long as you remember to put the negative sign on there. Last thing we're going to talk about is sequences. Uh, you've been doing these for a while. It's a counting pattern. Uh, we call them, each number in the sequence is called a term and the, the pattern is called a rule. And there's usually two kinds of sequences. Uh, there's a third kind that really only has one sequence in it that you have to remember. But the two are arithmetic sequences. So that's when we're, we're adding or subtracting to find the next term. And there's geometric sequences where we're multiplying or dividing to find the next term. The third term or the third kind of sequence that isn't one of those two is called, it's the sequence of perfect squares. That's neither arithmetic nor geometric. It's kind of on its own. We'll talk about that in a second. Right here, this is this is the sequence of perfect squares. And it's called that because the multiplication are the squares. Squares are 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4. So you can see it goes 1 4, 9, 16, 25, and it would keep going. But that doesn't follow either of these rules. So here's an example of a sequence. 1, 3, 9, 27. You have to figure out, well, how are we counting here? And I know this would be plus 2. This would be plus 6. 
this would be plus 21. So it's obviously not adding every time. So it must be a geometric sequence. It must be multiplying. So we figure out, oh, we're multiplying by 3. So this is a geometric sequence. 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, on and on and on. So the next three terms we would just multiply by 3. 27 times 3 is 81, 81 times 3 is 243, and 243 times 3 is 729. So the All right, that's it for this one. Make sure you go through your practice problems and post any questions on that discussion section. We'll see you in the next video.